ready to do this. This is my favorite way to square up a block. So instead of sitting here for five minutes talking about it, I'm just gonna tell you two or three quick things and then we're gonna start cutting material. Very first thing is cut your material, leaving about 200 thou long so you have some room to cut it to length. Second thing is do not cut the length first. You, want, you don't wanna stand it up and cut that first because that's kind of a pain. So what we're gonna do is square it up this way first and then we'll move on to indicating this up and down and cutting that to length. And another thing to look out for is wear safety glasses. Make sure you're clean and after each face you cut, you deburr it and stone it with oil and watch out for chips hitting people. Other than that, instead of explaining how I'm about to square this block up, let's just show you and you'll kind of learn as we go. So first things first, we're gonna put it in the center of the vise, which is more sturdy. Instead of hanging it off to the side like this, we're just gonna center it up and skim one face. This is a block of steel with a two and a half inch shell mill. I'm gonna go about 1100 spindle speed. I'm gonna bring my knee up to the shell mill with the spindle on and barely touch that face. All right, back off. I wanna do, I wanna use my power feed because I don't wanna sit here and crank handles all day long. And I'm gonna take about five thou. All right, so remember to make sure to have a shield because these chips can be very hot and they will burn you. So just find something to protect yourself and others. So I'm gonna turn that spindle speed on and I'm gonna crank it up. And you can use oil and put oil on top of the part and it'll leave a better finish as well. Okay, so we got our first face skimmed. Now it's time to flip it over. We are not taking off if you had a half inch to take off right here, unless it's gonna warp the part. Unless it's gonna warp the part, you can just skim this face and this face is a finished face. So this face is a part of the actual part. We're not gonna take any more off of this. So let me get that part out and we'll deburr it. By deburr it, I mean you want to file it, file all the edges you just cut and use this same back face if you can. Flip it over this way for the next stop. But for now, what we're gonna do is deburr it. So take your file, don't stroke it back and forth. That'll dull the file. You want to go forward with the file. And just because you file something does not mean that it's gonna be deburred. A good way to check is to run your fingers across the part. Be careful not to cut yourself, but use your fingernail on the edges and your fingernail will actually catch very, very tiny burrs that you can't even see. So you wanna be sure to file it like so and then stone it afterwards. And I'm only gonna do this once. I'll fast forward through all the other times so you don't have to sit here and be bored to death. So I'm gonna stone the face I just cut. Don't worry about the finish. You can always do scotch bride and sandpaper and things like that. And then I also want to stone the faces that are gonna be sitting in the vise because they can actually kick it off to the side. And what we're doing next for the skim two is bringing this parallel and one dimension to size. So kind of wipe it off. Make sure you got off all the burrs. I'm kind of going fast for you guys. So I'm not checking as much as I should, but just for the video. And so I don't put you guys to sleep. I'm gonna say that that is very well deburred and I ran my fingernails across it and everything's a perfect world and it is smooth, which feels pretty smooth anyway. So this is the face that was against the back jaw. This is the face I just cut. So this face and this face are the most important. So I'm gonna put that face that I used against the back jaw and the face I just cut down on some parallels. So I'm gonna find some parallels. Make sure that your vice is clean and your parallels are clean. That is very important in this next step. Because what we're gonna be doing is bringing this dimension down completely to size. Now, if you have a part that has all sawed edges, this method will not work. If you have a part that is long, skinny, and thin, this method will not work. But for most blocks, this method is amazing. So, 
I put that face that was already to the back jaw on the first cut to the back jaw this time. And then I'm gonna beat it down on some parallels. Now, when you check to make sure that these parallels are sitting flat, you wanna check this corner, this corner, and the other side. Because it might be tied over on this side, but this side could be loose. So make sure that you check all your sides, beat it down. If all the parallels are sitting flat, that means that when you cut this top face, the top face and the face you just cut is gonna be perfectly parallel. And it'll be within a thou or so. Now, another rule is on this face, we're gonna be roughing all the meat off. So you wanna be sure to leave about 20 thou for a finish pass. And after we do the roughing, you wanna make sure that it didn't vibrate off of the parallels. Because when we're roughing 100, 150 thou, it could actually vibrate off of the parallels. So that's why we're gonna leave like a 20 thou finish pass. Take it out, deburr it, measure it, put it, well, we can leave it in there and measure it because you got parallels in there. So you can deburr it, at least where you're gonna be measuring, measure it on both sides to make sure there's not a taper and then bring it down to size just as long as it's sitting flat on the parallels. So we're gonna turn our spindle on and touch the face and take a skim pass so we can measure it and see how much we have to take. Now, I personally don't have a print for this. I'm just showing you guys how to square up a block. But if I had to get in there, you can hang this part out towards the left so you can measure it. But what I would suggest doing is taking it out after you have about a 20 thou pass, measure it, then you put it back in, beat it back down on the parallels, making sure that everything's clean. And that way you're in the center of the vise, you're very sturdy because we're gonna be taking some heavy cuts. So. First things first, let's take a skin pass. We'll take it out, we'll measure it, and move on from there. All right, so I just touched it, so I'm gonna back off. I'm gonna take about a hundred thou pass. Now, when you take these big passes, you wanna make sure that your locks are tight, you know, make sure that your vise is tight and you don't want to plow through it real fast on a manual mill because it can actually stall the spindle. I've roughed it out at 50 thou pass and I brought it down to about 20 thou above the finished dimension and I'm going to take it out. I'm going to deburr it and, uh, well not deburr it, but deburr the parts that you're going to measure. So if you're measuring with calipers across this face, you need to knock off the burr that your calipers could be uh, touching. So. After I do that and I check for taper, then I'm gonna put it back in, beat it down, and then go to size. Okay, so if it has to be super close dimension, you could either grind it, or what you could do is do the same process. Barely skim it, take it out, measure it, put it back in. Or if you can get your mics in there, you could use high enough parallels to get your calipers in there. Uh, any way you wanna do it, but the thing is to make sure to beat it down so it's parallel with the first face that we cut, okay? On to the next step. Okay, so this is the third face that we're gonna be cutting. I have the two faces that we just cut that are parallel up against the back jaw and the front jaw. It does not matter at this point which face goes against the front jaw and back jaw because they, theoretically they should both be perfectly parallel as long as you kept clean and followed the instructions. So now the next step is gonna be skimming this face without beating it down. If you beat it down, it could caulk the part this way or that way, or however this face on the bottom is shaped is how it's gonna to try to follow. So I just clamped it. Now it's gonna be only as perpendicular as your vise and how clean you are, okay? So like I said before, these two faces that are up against the vise are the faces I just cut. This is the face that we're gonna be skimming. Then we're gonna do the same process. We're just gonna flip it over and then we're gonna bring it down to size. Turn my spindle on. Now we're just gonna take a skim pass. Just gonna to touch, I'm gonna to get off the part. Take a one or two thou to five to 10, it really doesn't matter as long as you can clean up the whole face. Back off, turn my spindle power feed on.
Okay, perfect. So now I can either run back across it or I can just turn it off, take it out. And then what we'll do is we'll deburr it and then we'll flip it over and we'll follow the same process as the face two that we cut. So very next step is take it out, flip it over, beat it on some parallels. Now that these three faces are perpendicular and parallel, then once you beat it down and you skim this face, it should be perfectly square. Okay, then the very next thing we do is stand it up, indicate this face up and down, skim this face, flip it over, beat it down, bring it down to size. Now, if it's a thin enough part, you can hang it out of the left or right and just skim it with an end mill. If you have a long enough end mill, that's also just as easy. But it's only going to be as perpendicular as your end mill is straight. If your end mill is tapered, then that's as square as your part's going to be. So, on to the next step. Okay, so I've already done step four. I've already flipped it over, deburred it, beat it on the parallels, and uh, brought it down to size. What I did was I, I roughed it out, and then I measured it. I was able to get in there with some mics, and then I've just, uh, the parallels didn't move at all while I was roughing it at 50 thou pass, so therefore I just took my skim pass and I mic'd it, and it was within a thou. So, this face is now done. The very next step, let me take it out of the vise, is going to be, you can't just sit it in the vise and cut the top because that's not going to work. You can't hang it out of the left, skim it, flip it over, skim it with an end mill because that won't be perfect, perfectly matching. So what we're going to do is we're going to stand it up, use your indicator to run up and down on one of these faces and bump it in straight, which isn't really that hard to do. If you barely nip your vise, and bump this in straight, It'll, you can bump it four or five times and you'll have it. And it's only gonna be as straight as this, and this is straight back here. So if you're straight here and here, when you skim this face, everything's gonna be perpendicular. So after we skim that face, you just repeat the process of flip it over, beat it down, and bring it down to size. Now with something sticking up this high, you can get a one, two, three block, or something, a bigger block, to get closer to the top for rigidity and to make sure that when you're shell milling you don't want to take 50 thou pass because what's going to happen is it's going to kick it over so you can take lighter cuts whenever it's sticking out of the vise that much just be careful make sure you measure your parts make sure you indicate this face straight up and down or if you can hang it out of the left and how you have a long end mill and side mill it but after you side mill it you can run an indicator up and down it and see how tapered your end mill was so without any further ado that is how you uh, pretty much square up a block. We can go ahead and finish this or you can take the lesson that I just taught you and run with it. I think we'll just go ahead and end this tutorial here actually because for the most part that is how you square up a block in my way. The next few tutorials we're going to be showing you guys different ways to square up a block with a ground pin if you have all sawed faces. But for now that's the method I like. You can choose whichever method you see in the next following videos. but. This block guaranteed will be within about a thou as long as it'll actually be within three or four tenths. Just as long as you're clean, your head is trimmed, and you follow all these little rules, then you will have a very square part and it will be to size as long as you crank the knee up at the right distance. But um, other than that, if you guys have any questions, be sure to email us or go to our newsletter, sign up, and you, we have a forum. You can ask us questions there. But if you have any other suggestions, go ahead and add comments, and we will look forward to you teaching you guys the other methods of squaring up a block. And if I think of anything else, I'll add it in the video with text, or I might even remake the video if I think of something else. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope you learned something. And remember, you can always take more than 50 thou a pass. You're just going to have to make sure everything is tight. You got a new belt. The belt up top is tight. If it's loose, then what's going to happen is it's going to stall, kind of like you saw in the video. So just be safe. Watch out for people getting hit with your chips because they will be flying everywhere. Clean up after yourself and enjoy yourself.